So, you've taken your camera out a few times now in nature, you've taken loads of beautiful images that you're proud of, but now it's time to make your work stand out. I'm here to meet Rodemir, who's a professional wildlife photographer and Canon ambassador, who's gonna show us what huge difference light can make, getting closer to wildlife and reducing your footprint on nature. Let's go find out. Radomir, what are we doing here today in this fantastic location? Today, uh, we want to learn more about wildlife, how we can get closer to wildlife and how light will affect our photography. What kind of skills are we going to be covering today? So we will talk a lot about uh, light in wildlife photography and how you can get a better blurred background. And of course, we will talk about the footprint in nature. Sounds amazing. I can't wait to learn about all these things. When it comes to wildlife photography, how important is it to get close to them? When you get closer to the animal, you have more opportunities to get sharper images, better contrast, and that the background is much more blurry because you are really close to the subject. And I see that you're holding this long lens in front of you there, but why do you need to get close to them if you have a lens that you can shoot from distance? With a lens like this, I can use 100 millimeter when I'm just in front of it. And when I want to get closer, maybe to make a close up shot or something like this, I can use also 500 millimeters. So it's nice to be closer because you have more opportunities how you want to shoot. And does that affect the quality of the image afterwards? No, the new Canon RF lenses are so strong that at 100 millimeter and at 500 millimeter, it's so tech sharp, it's incredible. When it comes to lighting, you have to think about the day, you know, what time of the day you come out and stuff like that. How important is that? That's the most important thing in wildlife photography, I think. The main species come out in the morning and in the evening. And of course, the light is most beautiful when we think about sunset or sunrise. I really enjoy backlights. And when the light is getting orange and yellow and maybe you get a silhouette or something like this, that's something very special in wildlife photography for me. And with backlight, how do you make sure that the pitch is still sharp? So normally it's uh, quite easy at the moment. So okay. you just have to use animal tracking. Most of the mammals or birds are tracked by Canon cameras, of course. What's your camera of choice for improving image quality? So when we think about full frame camera, the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is a really good choice because you have 24 megapixels and really sharp images out of it. Obviously, animals are very unpredictable. They move and you might want to get different, you know, perspective and stuff like that. Does the camera have any feature on there that allows you to do that? Yeah, for me, the flip screen is very important because when I shoot on eye level with the animals, so I'm shooting normally like this, or then I can flip it like this and shoot all my images from the ground. And I really enjoy when I'm on the eye level with the animal I shoot. Right, so that very angle uh, screen there it can be moved in different angles to allow for that. Yeah, so I can use it when I shoot horizontal or also when I shoot vertical. Amazing. You never miss a shot with that. Yeah. <laughs> As we've seen here today, your animals are quite unpredictable, they move about. How do you make sure you still get the right shot and make sure you don't miss the opportunity? For me, it's very important that I have a fast camera mm. and with this camera, I can shoot 12 frames per second mechanical. That sounded really fast, but does it not distract the animals or chase, chase them away? When I'm worried about this chasing the animal, I just have to go and to put on electronic shutter and then it sounds like this. Sounds like what? <laughs> <laughs> it's completely silent with 40 frames per second. Wow, so that was 40, 40 photos taken just like In that? In one second, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Radomir, so we've spoken about your shooting techniques. Uh, obviously, with wildlife photography, we have to think about the wildlife itself, the environment, the nature. Do you consciously think about your impact on the environment when you're shooting wildlife? Yeah, I, I try to always think about it because I don't want to disturb the animal. The most important part is that you don't disturb animal in the winter because in the winter season, they really need the food and the energy. So 
that they don't throw it away for the photographer. So really think about the animal because that's the key point that this place. One thing that's interesting to me is, yes, we talk about shooting technique, the camera, the lenses, but there's also the element of actually learning about the, the environment, the wildlife that you're shooting before you go. I, I think that that's the coolest part of my job because I can learn so much from nature. I can so much, uh, I can learn so much about every animal. So. I really enjoy learning every day something new, so that's the coolest thing. Thank you so much, that's been super interesting and some of the takeaway from me here today is you know, using the light to my advantage, being mindful of the environment and also using some of the camera features like your very angle uh, screen on there, silent shutter or electronic shutter. Uh, are there any other takeaway that we can take with us today, any other tips and tricks? I think when I have to give you one tip, use the light, try some backlight and try to make your image better with natural light. Thank you very much. Well guys, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos in the Canon Learning Series.